welcome back to my channel, Rouse Rising. I'm Katie. Today we're going to be making mozzarella cheese. This is my first time making mozzarella, so if you have suggestions down in the comments below, please leave them and help a mama out. So I dove right in after reading these instructions about 10 different times, and I finally felt confident enough to tackle the mozzarella. But I have a few concerns about the end product and I will get to that at the end of this video. But in the meantime, ooh, see if I can get it out of here. This is my ball of mozzarella. So we are going to use this mozzarella and make some focaccia or maybe we're gonna make some pizza. I don't know yet. You're gonna to have to stay tuned and see what we're gonna make with it. Right now it's just sitting here in this salt water brine and it's been sitting in here since yesterday. And that's just to keep it nice and salty and preserved. I do want to use this up within the next week. And the same with the ricotta that I am currently making back here. I'm going to want to use that up in a week as well. To make these two products here today, I am using fresh raw milk from a local farmer who had a cow that lost its calf and it needed to be milked. So until they found a replacement calf, we were the beneficiaries of some extra milk. So with all of that milk and that abundance that we were able to get, I decided I was gonna tackle some cheese making as well as some ice cream making. So you guys get to come along with me. We're gonna learn how to make cheese. We're gonna learn how to make ricotta and we're gonna learn how to make homemade ice cream without an ice cream maker because I don't have one, but I do have a freezer. So this is gonna be an easy ice cream at home. I am learning all of this and using this Junket Rennet tablets package. It has instructions to make all of these delicious, delicious products. So everything from homemade custards to different kinds of cheeses, hard cheeses, I'm not diving into that today, but I am making mozzarella and I am making this uh, ricotta. I'm gonna be using the ricotta in a homemade lasagna and that I'm sure is gonna be delicious as well as the uh, sourdough bread that I am making right now, or the sourdough, as you can see, it's nice and bubbly and fermented. We're gonna be using that to make some kind of bread in the oven that we're gonna melt our cheese on. So I had to dive right in and learn how to make cheese, and through that, I may have made mistakes. So if you catch my mistakes in this video, let's use it as a learning experience together and use it to make our next batch of mozzarella cheese better. I do plan to make more of this and this does freeze up quite well. So if you are in the market to have an abundance of raw milk or milk in general, then you can experiment and make your mozzarella cheese and then you can throw it in the freezer and you can use your cheese on pizzas, melting in the oven, whatever you wanna use it for, I hear that it freezes up great. So I plan on doing the same thing. If we don't get through all of this cheese in the next day or two, I do plan to freeze it in the freezer. I'll use it in the future because I'm gonna be making some more fresh mozzarella. I will share my next results with you all as well and let you know how that turns out. But in the meantime, we're just gonna be learning how to do this today. And I wanna encourage you guys all to learn a new skill, whether that's baking sourdough from scratch, whether that's baking a meal homemade from scratch, whether that's learning how to make one cheese. You don't have to learn how to make a lot of cheeses. Maybe learn how to make one cheese. Maybe learn how to make yogurt. Maybe learn how to make your bread from scratch, or maybe learn how to make one meal really well from scratch. And those are things that you can build on. So that's what I've been doing over the last 10 years. I've just been learning one skill upon the next skill upon the next skill. And I have learned to perfect those along the way. In my own form of perfection, I have learned to improve those skills and make the best of those skills so that I can produce products for my family like sourdough bread made from scratch. If I don't have yeast, I know that I can make a leaven with flour and water and I can make sourdough bread. Um, if I have access to milk, but let's say the stores are all shut down, we don't have cheeses, things like that, and we have an abundance of milk from uh, a farmer, or maybe we have our own milk cow. I want to know how to make cheese, so I'm going to go ahead and master that skill now while I can. Instead of waiting for the grid to go down, instead of waiting for 
things to hit the fan. I want to know how to do those things now so that I can preserve food should I encounter an abundance in the future. And I think that that will serve you well to have the tools in your belt or the knowledge and the know-how. And if you have the ability to do these things at home, those are things that if you just chip away at it a little bit every day, you may not be an expert the very first day, but you might become an expert in your own way. Don't be overwhelmed when you see somebody on YouTube making a variety of things. These people and myself included, we did not learn how to do these things overnight. This is my first time making cheese, but I have experience with other things, other knowledge that I bring to the table that kind of helped me make this first batch of cheese. It wasn't exactly what I would say a 100% success. I would say it maybe was 85% successful. We have an edible product. Whether or not it's a true mozzarella, I that has, is yet to be determined. Um, but every little bit that we can do every single day to improve our skill set as a homemaker is going to improve our family's life and our uh, our ability to thrive should there be a situation that we need these skills. Plus, how delicious is it that you can make homemade mozzarella? Something you can be proud of. Without keeping you waiting any longer, let's make some mozzarella. This is fresh Rawls milk that we just got from a farmer. And so I've let it sit for about 24 hours in my refrigerator. That allowed all the cream to rise to the top. Once the cream is rose to the top, you can then skim off the cream and you can save that to make butter or whatever you like. We are gonna be using this cream to make homemade ice cream. So stay tuned for that. Click the subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on the homemade ice cream sandwich video that will be coming up in the next few videos. So first, we're just going to pull off all this cream and set it aside in this quart glass jar. And then I'm dumping all of the rest of the milk into my instant pot, which I have heating up on the yogurt setting currently just to gently start to warm this milk up. With this cream in the jar, another option is you can shake the jar. I could have the children shake this jar into oblivion until a ball of butter forms. I've considered doing that. However, I think we would much rather have the ice cream. The next thing we wanna do after we get all of our cream uh, separated, and I do leave some of the cream for the cheese, is we want to boil a clean cloth. This is gonna be what we used to strain our curds from our whey. So once that's boiled, we're gonna dry it really well and we'll be using that in a colander to strain all of our curds out of our whey. Then we're gonna be storing our milk and cream back in the refrigerator so that we can use these for something else, a different recipe. This is a nifty little trick that I came up with because I didn't have a thermometer that would clip onto the side of my Instant Pot. So I just used one of these shaker balls from my husband's shaker drink bottles and it worked really well to hold my thermometer. The reason why a thermometer is very important is because you do not want to overheat your milk. This is citric acid. This is what we are gonna be using to curdle our milk. This helps separate the milk curd from the whey. You do want to use a pure citric acid. You do not want to use anything else that is mixed. For example, this ball fruit fresh produce protection is not what you want to use. And then you also need some junket rennet tablets or you can use rennet in a liquid form. This particular rennet is in tablet form and it comes with a variety of recipes. On this sheet, you can see all the different things that they recommend and the method and recipe to make different recipes. So today we are focused on the mozzarella and that requires one and a quarter teaspoons of this citric acid for one gallon of milk. I am using this junket rennet and I'm gonna use one tablet dissolved in a quarter cup of water. Now, liquid rennet is gonna yield a different result and you are gonna have a different 
recipe for a rennet rennet. So for this recipe, we are using the rennet tablets and we wanna make sure that's dissolved. Once we get our milk warmed up to about 88 degrees Fahrenheit, we are going to add the citric acid and we're gonna stir the milk for about 30 seconds. And once it is well incorporated, we are gonna remove the milk from the heat and then we're gonna add our dissolved rennet tablet and we're gonna stir again for about 20 seconds. And then we are gonna allow this to sit on the countertop for one and a half to two hours completely undisturbed so that all the curd can join together. And once the curd is together, we are just going to test this and make sure that it is solid. And to test to make sure it is solid and it has a clean break, we wanna see that the white part is separating and that the whey is not turning milky again. So it's more of a solid texture, kind of like a thick yogurt or a very soft cheese is what we're going for here. Then I am cutting this into little uh, one inch by one inch cubes. And we wanna do this to break it up into curds. Then we're going to rewarm this and help the curds separate from the whey a little better after we get it all sliced up. So the method to slicing is to cut one inch apart in one direction and then turn it 45 degrees and cut one inch across in a new section. And that yields these little one by one inch cubes that are gonna be our curds. Now we return the curds to a medium low heat and we heat it to 105 degrees, allowing the whey, the greenish liquid, to separate from the curds, stirring occasionally. Next up, I'm just gonna make a quick brine for this cheese. It's what I'm gonna store it in until we eat it. I'm using one third cup of real salt to a quart of water and we're just gonna give this a little mix and let it dissolve. This is gonna help preserve our cheese you can also wrap your finished cheese in saran wrap. You don't have to store it in salty water. Some people do not like their cheese that salty. I am lining my colander with a sterilized flour sack towel. You can pick these up from Walmart. I like to use it for my bread baking and for cheese making now. This is a colander that is resting in another bowl to catch all the whey because we're gonna be using this whey later on in another video to make ricotta. And you guys stick around for that. Be sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all of my latest uploads. We are straining all of this whey out of this cheese before we do the final process. I used over a gallon of milk, so I have over a gallon of whey remaining. So this is all of the cheese curds. The next step for this junk rennet requires you to microwave this. So I popped it in the microwave for 30 seconds. And then we're just gonna knead in about a teaspoon of salt. And I am just gonna stretch it and fold it until it forms a ball. I'm also pressing out some more of the whey. This helps just to remove any extra liquid. You wanna do this very carefully and you don't wanna overcook your cheese, which I believe is what I end up doing because I'm gonna reheat this in the microwave again and try to stretch it and roll it into balls, but it doesn't work out as well or as beautiful as I've seen on the internet, other people have done this. So here I am just shaping the cheese and squeezing out the remaining bit of whey. And I'm plopping it over there into my salty water. And I'm doing the same with this ball. I'm just squeezing out that extra bit of whey, any liquid that I can get out of there and just trying to form all of that warm cheese into a nice ball. As I'm sure you can imagine, my first time was not the charm. So I didn't feel like that was a successful batch of mozzarella. So here I am making my second batch uh, two days later. And these are the curds from my second batch. I believe what I did in the first batch was I was afraid and I was hesitant to heat the curds properly. I was timid because I was afraid I would mess it up. So this time I did a full 20 seconds in the microwave and then I squeezed out some of the whey. I just removed it and kind of turned it all around. And then I stuck it back in the microwave for another full 20 seconds. And what you see right now is the result of that. So this time I am adding about a teaspoon of salt 
to my mozzarella. I probably did three quarters of a teaspoon. I didn't want it to be too salty. And I'm stretching and folding it. And you can see that it's all nicely melted. The gloves help protect my hands against the heat. It is still pretty hot on my fingers. And it's hot enough that it is melty and stretchy. Could I have warmed it a little bit more? Maybe 10 more seconds would have been perfect and I really would have been able to stretch out this cheese. But look at how well it is forming into a nice ball. This is the consistency and the texture that you want your cheese to be. You want it to be nice and elastic and cohesive. That's what's gonna give it that distinctive mozzarella texture. That's what's gonna make it stringy. That's what's gonna make it delicious and melty. So you can see I've formed a nice ball here and next I'm gonna drop it into some ice cold water to help it maintain its shape. The last cheese I did um, a salt water brine to store it in. This one, I'm just gonna pop it into the ice water and then once it's maintained its shape once it has cooled completely i'm going to wrap it in saran wrap and save it for the focaccia that we're going to be making in my next video so today what we're going to be doing is making lasagna and let's get into that because i'm going to use my first batch of mozzarella that was a fail i'm going to use it on my uh, well, we ate some of it because it was very tasty. Still, it didn't turn out beautiful, but it was still very tasty. And we used it on lasagna. It worked out beautifully. It was amazing, you all. So even though your first attempt at something may not be a exactly as you intended it to be, it's still probably edible. It's still going to be flavorful. It's still going to be yummy. So I encourage you all, give this a try. Make yourself some beautiful mozzarella and enjoy started out with a mirepoix and that is basically diced up carrots, onions, and celery. To that I added my ground beef. I also shredded up some zucchini real fine and added that to my sauce mix. And over here you can see I'm going to start making the ricotta cheese mixture. With that I am using two eggs and I'm going to be adding to it some cottage cheese that I had in the refrigerator because I don't quite have enough ricotta to make this lasagna tonight. But this is gonna be my homemade ricotta leftover from the way that I made the mozzarella. Uh, my next video, I'm gonna share with you how I made this ricotta, but for now, I'm just gonna show you my method and my madness to making this delicious lasagna with our homemade cheeses. I wanna make this ricotta stretch, so I am adding it to some cottage cheese. I'm gonna end up using all of the ricotta in this recipe. Right now, it just I'm just trying to mix it all and not create a disaster in my bowl. So I'm gonna get most of these ingredients mixed up. Different people add different things to their lasagna. I'm adding about a tablespoon of parsley to my ricotta mixture. And that is, I would say about two cups of cheese and two eggs. I'm gonna end up adding another egg and the rest of the ricotta you see there in that bowl to this mixture. And then we're gonna layer it up in this lasagna. If you've never made lasagna before, or if you haven't made it before with noodles that are uncooked, I highly recommend it because, well, it saves dishes and watching a boiling pot and all the things that come with boiling pots of water that I just don't wanna deal with right now. So I'm throwing these in there uncooked and I am layering the noodles between sauce. That way the sauce and all the juices from the sauce cook the noodles and then I'm going to put the ricotta on top and then I'm going to put another layer of sauce and then another layer of noodles, another layer of sauce, another layer of ricotta, cottage cheese or cheese mixture we can call it. We're just going to keep doing that until this pan is full. I have a very chunky sauce so it's not going to take long to fill up this pan and then we're going to top it all with the shredded up mozzarella cheese that I made that was not made properly I would say but it's still melted and made a really delicious topping for this lasagna so again I encourage you to try it and if it doesn't if it is a fail or it appears to be a fail I promise you it's going to turn out fine and it, you can still use it for cooking and you'll get better we can go back and analyze what I did here. I probably didn't microwave it long enough. Um, I'm not really sure what happened or maybe I cooked it too long. When you use this junk rennet, it requires you to microwave and we just bought a microwave in the last year. We haven't had a microwave in our home for 10 years 
and this rennet I've had for a while and I'm able to use it now because we have a microwave, but liquid rennet or a different type of rennet, you can actually put the cheese back into the brine or into the whey and heat it that way and then stretch it and cook it um, and form your mozzarella that way. But the way that I did it was using the microwave and I'm so scared of using the microwave that I don't know if I even use the microwave correctly to heat this cheese. I know that sounds crazy bizarre, but today when I remade the mozzarella and you saw that earlier in this video, you saw my second batch, it turned out really well. And I did 20 seconds in the microwave and then I kind of mixed it a little bit. And then I did 20 seconds more. I added my salt, I kneaded it a little bit, and then I did 10 seconds more. And that made the cheese perfect. The lasagna goes into a preheated 375 degree oven. I put it in there for one hour because my noodles were not cooked. And after an hour, I removed the parchment paper and the foil. The parchment paper keeps the cheese from sticking to the foil. And then I put it in there for another 20 minutes so that the top got all nice and melty. The whole family loved it. And then if you're wondering, what are you gonna do with all that leftover whey? Well, I'm gonna make whey lemonade, of course. So stay tuned because again, another recipe I'm gonna be sharing with you guys. I'm gonna have the four top summer drinks that you need in your repertoire so that your family's gut can stay healthy and you can stay hydrated all the while providing a fun summer drink the whole family can enjoy. Stay tuned for that, and I wanna thank you guys so much for watching with me today. Thank you for learning how to make this mozzarella cheese. I had so much fun hanging out with you. This is gonna sit on my counter for two days. Yep, we're making fermented whey lemonade. So, like I said, I can't wait until the next video and share that recipe with you. Until next time, you all, take it easy, keep on rising, keep on shining. Bye.